Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teaches my hands to war, and my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, and my, and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Lord, what is man, that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man, that thou makest account of him? Man is like to vanity, his days are as a shadow that passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down, touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning, and scatter them, shoot out thine arrows, and destroy them. Send thine hand from above, rid me, and deliver me out of great waters, from the hand of strange children, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. The whole psalm describes the tribulation verses 1 to 8, and the millennium verses 9 to 15. We are told that the prayer for God to bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down, verse 5, was a reference to the incarnation, Luke 1 and 2. This ridiculous nonsense came from Jonathan Edwards, but because he was so called godly man and greatly used of God, like they said, you are to accept this ludicrous bit of rhetoric as the truth. Verses 5, 6, and 7 have no more been fulfilled at any time, uh, what comes now and then, than Isaiah chapter 2 or 11. Observe that verses 1 and 2 are Psalm chapter 18, verse 2 and 34, Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 3 and 35, almost verbatim. If you look those passages, you can see that the real subject is the second advent of Jesus Christ. Look at verses 5, 6, and 7 in the passage, and then look at Samuel chapter 22, verses 15 to 17, and Psalm chapter 18, verse 9, 11, 13, and 14. You can see in those verses and many others that God himself is coming to earth in rage, wrath, and power, and delivering Israel by wiping out their enemies. Many are saying, contradicting this all, but don't believe them. The strange children of verse 7 are defined in Isaiah chapter 57 verse 4, Jude chapter 12, 2 Peter chapter 2, and Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 5. Their right hand is Satan, verse 8, incarnate. Look at Psalm 109 verse 6. God's right hand is Jesus Christ, Psalm chapter 17 verse 7, chapter 18 verse 35, chapter 20 verse 6, and 21 verse 8. Verse 3 has been commented on, an, on under Psalm chapter 8, verse 4. Even though the reference is to mankind in general from Adam, one cannot help but notice the direct reference to the second advent, as interpreted by the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. His days are as a shadow. The great discourse of humanity in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 10 Strangely, the word Abel, Genesis chapter 4, verse 2, means trans transitory or passing, a word very much like the Old Testament vanity, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2, which means like the wind. Here today, gone tomorrow, empty, worthless, temporary. Most of the Hebrew text says, Adam is like Abel. Adam lived more than 900 years but there was a sense in which his life was as transitory as Abel's, who was cut off before his time. The prayer is for, second, is for the second advent, to stop man because man is worthless, he is a vapor. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God. Upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. It's he that giveth salvation unto kings who delivered David, his servant, from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornstones polished after the similitude of a, of a palace, that our carnes may be full of affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there, is, there be no breaking in, 
nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that is in such case, in such a case. Yeah, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. To mess up the scholars, the Holy Spirit sticks verse 11, in which in some still in the tribulation as verse 8, but all around it, verses 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15, are verses that deal with the millennium. The new song has been commented on under Psalm chapter 33, verse 3, and uh, chapter 40, verse 3. In verse 10, David has been delivered from the sword of Saul, 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 11, the sword of Goliath, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 51, the sword of the Philistines, 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 15, and the sword of the Syrians, 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5. The hurtful sword, verse 10, historically, could have been the last one aimed at him that nearly killed him, 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 16. The salvation in the verse is not spiritual salvation, but the preserve, preservation of a king's life in battle. See 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verses 20 to 23. But the verse goes beyond this into God's servant. See Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13, being delivered from Satan. See Job chapter 5, verse 15 and 20 and chapter 19, verse 29, and especially Psalm chapter 17, verse 13. That our sons, our daughters, our corners, our oxen, our streets, yeah, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Verse 12, 13, 14, and 15. One can make all kinds of beautiful sermons from the passage, but the context is Israel. And every hour in the passage is a reference to Jews in the millennium. The Antichrist and his people are in verse 11. Those who follow verses 12, 13, 14, etc. have been delivered from him as David was delivered in verse 10. Observe that Job 42 defines the context. For Job is the greatest type of the great tribulation of any book in the entire Bible, followed by Daniel and Jeremiah. In Job 48, the captivity of Job is turned, verse 10, and then the subject matter of Psalm 144 follows. Verse 12, sons and daughters, see Job chapter 42, verse 13. Verse 13, sheep and oxen, see Job chapter 42, verse 12. Verses 14 and 15, happiness and contentment, see Job chapter 42, verses 10 and 16. To give you some idea of the depraved and godless mess you can get into, try this. Paul had no sons and daughters, although his God was certainly his Lord, verse 15. He had no corners, verse 13, to put anything into. He didn't own a leg of mutton, let alone the 10,000 sheep, verse 13. And he had no streets to call his own, our streets, verse 14, because he had no continuing city, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. He never was in such a case, verse 15. A day in his life. Yet he told you to follow him. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16, and chapter 11 verse 1. Paul fulfilled every requirement for verse 15, but he didn't get anything promised to a man who fulfilled it. Verse 12, 13, and 14. In verse 15, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Is God your Lord? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Do you, you, do you believe in Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved? Is this God your God? Are you happy that you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ? Or are you totally in unhappiness while going to hell without Jesus Christ, without salvation, without hope and without eternal life in heaven? Or are you just one of those billions who are crying water in the hell? Don't let it happen to you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen.